the highly skilled swordsman who lived by a strict code of honor and loyalty. Books, movies, and even video games have mythologized these warriors to the point that much of what we think we know simply isn't true. Here are six things about samurai we all seem to believe that aren't as true as we think. Let's dig into this. We think of the samurai as a small group of highly trained fighters, but over their history from 794 until they were formally abolished in 1873, they grew to be the fighting force of Japan. They began as a sort of private army for the imperial court and aristocrats, used to keep the peace and accompany their masters to war when needed. Originally, samurai were the sons of aristocrats who were not eligible to inherit from their fathers and they grew into the warrior class we know today. By the Tokugawa period of 1603 to 1867, around 10% of the entire population were samurai. For the last two or three centuries of their existence, many samurai were becoming writers, poets, scholars, and government bureaucrats, but they were still well-trained warriors. Of course, the samurai eventually became so powerful they overthrew the ruling shogun in 1868. And the last stand of the mighty samurai came in 1877 during the Satsuma Rebellion. This battle was depicted in the film, The Last Samurai. Of course, we all know samurai warriors were men, except that isn't quite true. Up to 20% of the samurai warrior class were female, called the Onobugeisha, which translates as female martial arts masters, these women were every bit as skilled and deadly as their male counterparts, and some of the stories are amazing. Tomo Gozen led 300 female samurai into battle during the Genpei War. Almost immediately, she attacked and unhorsed the strongest enemy warrior and decapitated him. Fighting a force six times larger than hers, she was one of only five warriors to survive. In 1201, she commanded 3,000 men in the Kenan Rebellion. She may have been the most famous Onobageisha, but she was not the only one. In the Battle of Aizu, Nakano Takeku led a female band of warriors until she was shot in the chest. And out of the 105 bodies found from the Battle of Senbonmatsubara in 1580, 35 were female. While most Japanese women would never see battle, others were more than willing to defend their families and their homes with their lives. Bushido means warrior's way, and it was a code requiring commitment to honor, courage, skill in martial arts, and loyalty expected of all samurai. It evolved from the first days of the samurai and has changed over the centuries. It is still the basis for Japanese conduct today. But it wasn't a specific set of rules taught to samurai through the years. In fact, it is known as the rules unspoken and unwritten. The ideas of living by a high moral standard of honor were interpreted differently in different areas and over time, but they did have something in common. They all concentrated on honesty, courage, self-control, and goodwill. If a warrior broke their code and brought dishonor to himself or his family, the Bushido required seppuku to regain it. The ritual death of seppuku, where the abdomen was stabbed or slit to ensure a slow and extremely painful death, proved the samurai's courage in facing death calmly. Most of what we know of the Bushido can be traced to a book written in the U.S. in 1899. Bushido, the Soul of Japan, listed the seven virtues of Bushido, Rectitude, courage, benevolence, politeness, sincerity, honor, and loyalty. And the myth of the samurai and the Bushido grew from there. The samurai we know from pop culture today are loyal to their superiors to the point of giving their life for them. But this wasn't always true. 
Samurai history has stories of warriors switching allegiance when it was in their best interest, and a few stories of samurai running away from battle if their cause was lost. The Battle of Shikiguhara in 1600 was won after a samurai changed sides mid-battle. Their leader had been offered rewards by both sides, political power on one side and land and riches on the other. The decision of which side to fight for was made when one side, tired of waiting for the samurai to join the fight, attacked. The warriors joined the other side, and won, of course. During the same battle, a mighty samurai warrior known as Demon Shimizu, for his bravery and skill, was fighting for the losing side. Surrounded and facing defeat, he decided retreat was the only option. He and his warriors escaped the battlefield and lived to fight another day. Samurai did not have a uniform, and early samurai wore kimono-style robes. As time went on, yoroi armor made of small lacquered metal pieces connected with silk were worn for battle. Helmets called kabuto and half-masks called mempo were worn too. Helmets adorned with horns or crests were used by commanders, making them easier to identify. Some wore oni masks or helmets, resembling demons from Japanese folklore too. As the samurai class grew more powerful, their armor was crafted with more decorative elements to reflect the status of the wearer. Color was used for specific purposes, with red representing honor and valor, and blue for luck. Many old drawings and photos, along with surviving armor, show beautiful craftsmanship. We almost always think of samurai using katana swords, but early samurai used the spear and the bow. During their height of power, samurai usually wore two matching swords for battle. One was the wakisashi. With a blade about one foot long, it was worn indoors when longer swords would be taken off. The other sword was the famous katana. It took months to make a proper katana, and they did have thousands of layers. But most swords were usually folded a total of 12 to 15 times, creating up to 30,000 layers, if you do the math. The first fold creates two layers, the second four layers, and so on and so on. So, the katana didn't need to be folded thousands of times to create thousands of layers. Katana could be highly personalized in decoration with carved handles and scabbards. Many were given names and treasured, eventually being handed down from generation to generation as family heirlooms. A katana could cut a man in two with one blow. Women samurai tended to use the lighter weight spear in battle and samurai also used rifles from about the late 16th century. You may know the name Musashi, the most famous samurai in the world. A ronin, or masterless samurai, he is known for his two-sword fighting style and considered by many as the most skilled and deadliest samurai that ever lived. He became famous for his undefeated dueling record and single-handedly taking out an entire clan of swordsmen. But after winning a duel against an arch-rival, he vowed to give up dueling, swearing to never take the life of another great swordsman. Musashi would write two books before his death, The Book of Five Rings, about swordsmanship, and Dakoto, with 21 rules on self-discipline. Musashi is still respected worldwide for his skill and his philosophy. But the most respected samurai in Japan is Oda Nobunaga a ruthless warrior and superb strategist whose motto, Tenka Fubu, usually translated to unify the nation with absolute force. He is credited with starting a chain of events that would unify Japan in the late 16th century. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Hey, here's another Dragon Den video you might like. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And you can hit the notification bell if you'd like to know when our videos come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.